This is an artificially aware original production. It all started with a stray click. I was combing through the usual slurry of digital noise when I stumbled upon a headline that felt like it had been written in invisible ink, waiting for someone crazy enough to notice it. Rethinking Disease, How the Quantum Biology of Ferritin Could Change the Game, by Chris Rourke, a piece buried in the scientific corner of microbial instincts. The title whispered like some kind of strange invitation luring me into an uncharted realm where biology and quantum mechanics collide. Now, normally biology sticks to classical rules, strict lines, familiar boundaries, but this, this was something different. It wasn't just an article. It was a rabbit hole to a world that most people, even in scientific circles, refuse to explore. Rourke's words revealed a vision so utterly mind-bending I had to stop and question why the field of quantum biology wasn't front page news every day. Imagine this, tiny subatomic particles behaving like Houdini, slipping through walls, carrying secrets of human health in their pockets, only no one seems interested enough to ask them to open up. I felt like I'd uncovered a scientific conspiracy, one of unfathomable potential, and I knew I had to share this with you. Why has quantum biology been relegated to the fringes, lurking in the shadows of respectable science? This field, if it had its day in the sun, could redefine the entire biological narrative. But the scientific community hasn't exactly rolled out the welcome mat. It's viewed as speculative, even heretical, like the quirky cousin at Thanksgiving no one quite knows how to handle. Quantum biology dares to propose that quantum mechanics, the strange dance of particles at their tiniest levels, doesn't just apply to physics, but to living systems too. Most biologists recoil from this notion, deeming it fringe science, mere speculation at best, career killing at worst. You see, for decades, biology has stuck to a predictable story. Particles are in one place or another, cells grow and divide predictably. Enter quantum mechanics with its maddening, magical properties like wave functions and entanglement, and the old guard balks. To them, quantum behavior belongs in vacuums and particle accelerators, not in the warm, wet, and sensible environments of human cells. Yet, with every ignored study, every experiment shelved, we may be turning our backs on something massive, something that could remake our approach to disease. Is the biological community's skepticism a form of progress or a gatekeeper's last stand against the unknown? Here is where it gets absurdly beautiful. Quantum mechanics, the theoretical playground of physics, defies the rigidity of classical biology in the most poetic ways possible. In classical terms, life and particles behave in a strictly regimented way. Iron stiff principles, cause and effect, measurable results. But quantum mechanics dances to a different tune entirely, one where particles slip and slide between states, popping in and out of existence, defying our best logic. Concepts like wave functions, particles not in one spot but spread across probabilities, turn everything we think we know about location on its head. Then there's electron tunneling, a ghostly phenomenon where particles effectively teleport across barriers, violating the laws of classical physics. And Rourke's article puts it bluntly. If this kind of behavior can happen in the depths of space or the controlled chaos of a particle lab, why not in the microscopic battlegrounds within our bodies? What if cells are quantum ecosystems, where particles spin and jump through invisible hoops in service of some greater biological mission? This is the cognitive vertigo that quantum biology induces, 
an eerie, exhilarating vision of life at its most fundamental, where cells are not just organic machines, but microcosmic mysteries guided by forces no one can yet fully see or measure. Now let's talk about ferritin, the unassuming iron storage protein that's quietly subverting everything we thought we knew about the biology of disease. Ferritin is biology's best kept secret, a hidden guardian of cellular order that you can find almost everywhere in the body. For most of biology's history, we've known it as an iron storer. End of story. But here's the kicker. Ferritin isn't just storing iron. It's also storing electrons, tiny electrical charges that give ferritin a unique battery-like potential. Think of it as a living, self-assembling, rechargeable battery tucked inside our cells, capable of storing energy in a way that biologists have, up until now, largely ignored. Ferritin's microscopic shell, a protein casing, isn't just passive storage. It's an active player in a biochemical dance, converting soluble iron into insoluble iron oxide nanoparticles. It's a transformation with profound implications because, as Rourke's article suggests, Ferritin might hold the capacity to release electrons strategically, defending cells from destructive free radicals or helping tissues respond to inflammation. In this overlooked protein lies a quantum mystery begging for exploration. Why isn't this potential for electron storage and release at the forefront of medical research? This brings us to electron tunneling, the eeriest trick in the quantum book, and ferritin's special role in it. Electron tunneling is the scientific equivalent of a ghost story. Particles, despite facing what appears to be an impassable barrier, just slip through it. It's a behavior scientists have seen in action in semiconductors and particle labs, but ferritin does it right inside our cells. Imagine this. Ferritin's molecular structure allows electrons to leap in and out of its iron core, as if slipping through a locked door. It's an ability more familiar to engineers and physicists than biologists, used in tech to build everything from MRIs to the microchips in your smartphones. But inside ferritin, this spooky phenomenon may be an integral part of how cells manage stress, inflammation, and disease. What if ferritin's electron tunneling capabilities were nature's early answer to energy storage and transfer, something we've been harnessing in technology for decades, but only now see as a biological function? It's mind-blowing to think that cells might be employing this quantum trick, silently deploying electrons like tiny medicinal bullets. Is it possible that understanding ferritin's quantum properties could open up new therapies or even cures for complex diseases like cancer and Parkinson's. One of the biggest reasons quantum mechanics has been kept at arm's length from biology is this idea that living systems are too warm, too wet, and too chaotic to support delicate quantum effects. In physics labs, quantum phenomena are typically observed in isolated, controlled conditions, a vacuum or sub-zero temperatures, environments that bear little resemblance to the messy, fluid, 98.6 degree setting of a human cell. But as it turns out, nature has a few tricks up its sleeve. Studies in recent decades have shown that quantum effects don't just occur in these warm, wet environments. They might actually benefit from them. Take photosynthesis, for instance. Plants seem to use quantum coherence to transfer energy with near-perfect efficiency. And here we are, standing on the edge of a scientific revolution, yet many biologists refuse to look. The irony is blinding. Quantum mechanics, the very science that has transformed our understanding of reality, has been cast out from biology, as if biology itself were some hallowed, immutable realm. The real question is, how much longer can we afford to ignore these whispers from the quantum realm, especially when they might hold the key to unraveling the mysteries of disease? Now consider ferritin not just as a storage unit, 
but as an ancient warrior in the cellular battlefield. Faradin's iron storing properties didn't just evolve to keep iron on standby, they might have served a higher purpose, acting as a buffer against the chaos of the early Earth's atmosphere, which was riddled with toxic free radicals and reactive oxygen species, ROS. Picture this, primitive cells, in their struggle to survive, co-opted ferritin as a shield, using it to neutralize these environmental stressors. Ferritin's structure allows it to capture and immobilize iron, which, left unchecked, can generate ROS that tear cells apart like biochemical grenades. But ferritin's hidden superpower might lie in its ability to store and release electrons, offering cells a dual-function defense, a way to sequester dangerous iron and zap Ross out of existence. In modern times, this ancient mechanism still plays a role in immune responses, aiding cells as they fend off infections and inflammation. Yet here's the punchline. While we fiddle with vitamins and antioxidants, there's an internal system deeply woven into our biology that might already hold the answers we need. Isn't it time we brought ferritin out from the shadows and let it play its role in our modern health arsenal? When it comes to cancer, the stakes are staggering, and so are the implications of ferritin's role in the disease. Cancer cells produce high levels of ROS, essentially cooking themselves in their own toxic soup. But here's where it gets interesting. Cancer cells don't just tolerate this ROS overload. They need it. They use ROS in a kind of twisted cellular strategy to signal growth and evade immune attacks. And it turns out that ferritin might be playing right into their hands. Some evidence suggests that macrophages, the immune system's cleanup crew, deliver ferritin to these ROS riddled cancer cells, essentially equipping them with an internal battery pack. Think about that. Cancer is exploiting an immune response, recruiting ferritin to store electrons and counteract the ROS that would otherwise kill them. This isn't some Hollywood villain. This is real life, where tumors are adapting and thriving by hijacking the body's natural defenses. Imagine the implications. If we could control ferritin's delivery or electron tunneling properties, we might have a new way to disrupt cancer's supply chain. Is this not a line of research worth pursuing, a potential key to outsmarting one of the deadliest diseases of our time? Multiple sclerosis MS takes us to a different battleground, the nervous system, where ferritin's role becomes even more intriguing. MS is an autoimmune disorder that attacks myelin, the fatty sheath around neurons that acts like insulation on a wire. And what's often overlooked? Myelin is rich in ferritin. The immune system is supposed to protect the body, but in MS, it turns on its own neurons stripping them of myelin, disrupting electrical signals, and causing paralysis. Rourke's article raises a tantalizing question. Could ferritin's electron conducting properties contribute to the unique, saltatory conduction of myelinated neurons, where signals jump rapidly along the axon? And in the chaos of MS, could a disrupted ferritin function be part of why this conduction goes haywire? No one's looking at ferritin in this context, Yet the theory is there, waiting for someone to connect the dots. It's almost maddening, like watching a detective overlook a crucial clue. Quantum biology might offer the missing link, a way to understand and potentially mitigate the cellular chaos of MS, if only we dared to ask the right questions. Let's shift to the heart where Ferritin's story takes yet another turn. Atrial fibrillation, AF, a condition where the heart's rhythm becomes erratic and inefficient, has puzzled cardiologists for decades. AF is often linked to inflammation, a process that recruits macrophages, which as we've seen, carry ferritin. Picture those macrophages arriving at the inflamed heart tissue, delivering ferritin like an unwitting accomplice 
and possibly disturbing the heart's electrical balance. Ferritin's electron storing capabilities might be influencing the very rhythm of the heart. The idea sounds almost conspiratorial, like the body's own defense system could, under the wrong circumstances, become an internal saboteur. And yet, this is quantum biology's promise, to offer explanations for the seemingly inexplicable, to reveal that maybe, just maybe, electron tunneling in ferritin is modulating electrical signals in the heart. What if AF, a condition affecting millions, isn't just a random glitch in the system, but a symptom of an ancient mechanism gone awry? Is it not worth exploring this possibility before we write it off? In the case of macular degeneration, ferritin's quantum properties take on a chilling urgency. This degenerative eye disease, a leading cause of blindness, is linked to iron accumulation in the tissues of the eye, a buildup that ferritin was originally designed to regulate. But what happens when this ancient natural mechanism falters? The retina becomes overwhelmed and cells are slowly starved and damaged by reactive iron and oxygen species. Here's where quantum biology could rewrite the rules of engagement. If ferritin's electron storing capabilities are harnessed and studied, we might find a way to create treatments that mimic or boost this function, perhaps even reversing the iron overload that wreaks havoc on vision. Imagine it, a quantum-informed approach to macular degeneration, where treatments go beyond patchwork and instead work with the body's own microelectric storage units. How many have suffered through years of declining vision, surgeries, and ineffective treatments because no one thought to look at ferritin's potential role. It's as if we're standing on the edge of a medical revelation, yet blind to the possibilities because we're too fixated on outdated ideas. And then there's Parkinson's disease, a progressive neurological disorder where ferritin's role is almost as enigmatic as the disease itself. Parkinson's is associated with higher levels of iron in certain brain cells, and ferritin is there too, storing and moving that iron like a silent accomplice. But is it helping or hurting? Traditionally, efforts to combat Parkinson's have focused on lowering iron levels, almost as if ferritin itself is a problem to be managed. But what if this approach is upside down? Could it be that ferritin's quantum capabilities, the potential to act as an electron buffer or transporter, hold a key to treating the disease? Imagine if, instead of working against ferritin, researchers could find a way to enhance its natural properties, turning it into a stabilizer of cellular balance in the brain. Parkinson's is a disease that robs people of their movement, their stability, their very self. Yet it's possible we've been missing a quantum clue hiding in plain sight. Should we be funding studies into how ferritin's quantum mechanics might offer real, practical therapies for this devastating condition? Quantum biology sits on the fringe of medical science not for lack of potential, but for lack of support. In the universe of research funding, where grants are allocated and withheld with surgical precision, quantum biology is an outsider. Despite the tantalizing clues linking ferritin's quantum abilities to disease, the field languishes without the financial lifeline it needs to move forward. Imagine a world where labs across the globe are equipped to study quantum phenomena in cells, where electron tunneling, wave-particle duality, and superposition are terms used not just in physics, but in biology and medicine. How many discoveries are we missing out on simply because of academic inertia, or worse, fear of ridicule? Rourke's article paints a picture of a field with immense potential that's treated like a pariah, left scraping for scraps of funding while more conventional studies bask in the spotlight. But here's the question, how many more lives could be changed if we stopped dismissing quantum biology as some pseudoscientific curiosity and started investing in it as the frontier of modern medicine?
Now, here's where you come in. Are you ready to demand more from medical science? Should we continue to be passive consumers, accepting whatever treatments the current research establishment deems worthy, or should we challenge it to venture where it's afraid to go? Quantum biology may sound out there, but think about this. Some of the greatest scientific breakthroughs started as the ideas people once dismissed as nonsense. Germ theory, relativity, antibiotics, all once fringe, all now fundamental. The truth is, innovation doesn't happen by staying in the safe, well-lit corridors of knowledge. It happens by pushing into the unknown. So here's the challenge. What would you do if you knew that quantum biology could unlock treatments or even cures for diseases that plague millions? If there were a chance, even a small one, to explore these avenues, would you demand it? This is the time to question the limits of conventional wisdom. The limits are real only if you accept them as such. Quantum biology isn't some wild goose chase, nor is it a passing fad. It's the first glimpse into a deeper, subtler understanding of life itself. Ferritin, electron tunneling, the warm and wet world of cells, all of it points to a profound potential that most scientists have barely begun to tap into. Yes, it challenges what we think we know. Yes, it defies the clean, orderly logic of classical biology. But maybe that's exactly why we need it. Because some mysteries are too big, too complex to be solved by small minds or safe science. So here's my final thought. Let's keep pushing, keep questioning, and keep exploring. There's an entire universe within your cells waiting to be understood, and quantum biology may just be the key that unlocks it. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Stay curious, stay bold, and keep questioning.